What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. We have more subscribers joining the league today. Lots of comments, lots of people wanting to get involved. I really, really love to see that. Pretty soon, the SFL is going to stand for the Subscriber Football League rather than the Smalls Football League. I'm going to dive right in here and update you guys on all the brand new subscribers that have joined the league here. And also, it is worth noting, I went through every team's death chart. I had to retire my coach, jump to that team. But I made sure that all the subscriber players are properly aligned and getting reps in the depth chart. I know week one was a little bit of the letdown for some of the subscribers, but hopefully this week you guys will get a lot more involved. So let's kick things right off here and update you guys with what's going on around the league. Kicking things off with the Austin Lumberjacks, who we just played last week, first game of the season, and lost to them in the most Madden fashion possible. We have Michael Yakin. Hopefully I'm I am pronouncing that name right. Thank you for the correction on that. I did have Michael here on the Oklahoma City Antlers, but since they have Justin Herbert, moved him over to the Lumberjacks, and he will now be their starting quarterback because Anthony Richard is hurt. Pretty good QB. I highlighted him last season, but again, very good throw power, pretty accurate, and also a pretty good scrambler with the 92 speed and the 92 acceleration. And then also on the Lumberjacks, who we do play again in week 11. So make sure you guys tune in. We have James Briner here, who is now actually starting above Noah Fant on the depth chart. And I did not actually reorder that one. So James, I guess the Lumberjacks saw something in you, brother. Last episode, because you did get the starting nod over Noah Fant. More of a blocking tight end, but let's not be fooled by that slick and sly uh, route running. It's, you know, it's not great for a tight end, but it's good enough. But the catch in traffic and the speed, I feel like James here is going to make some plays. And again, we are going to be seeing these guys twice per year. So get ready for a potential rivalry, heated battle for years to come. I don't know. Moving over to the Canton Condors here in the AFC North, who we will also play in week nine, we have my man Eli Sokowitz, a.k.a. Socks. Shout out to Annie Socks in the comments. Also has his own YouTube channel, so if anybody's interested in anime, big anime fan, go check out at Annie Socks' channel. He does a lot of great work with anime, but he is going to be the starting free safety here in Canton. Already an 83 overall player, six foot, 205 pounds, out of the University of Delaware. He... Could potentially be the future in the secondary. Pretty fast, you know, decent uh, with the zone coverage. Pretty good tackler, pretty good hit power. But my man's got a 99 toughness. Socks, I know you are tough as nails out there. And I feel bad for any, you know, any route runner who catches the ball and gets a big hit laid out them by my man Socks here. You're probably going to be feeling it in the morning and could be the future for the Canton Condors defensive unit. San Juan Tigers over in the NFC South, and we do play them in week 10 as well. So a lot of the teams that the subscribers are on here, we will be seeing them live in action. So make sure you guys tune into every episode so you don't miss yourself in gameplay. We got my man, Nick Stoyer. Shout out to Nick Stoyer at Nick, Nick Stoyer. I'm sorry, 1054 in the comments out of the Ohio State University. Love to see it. Ohio's where I'm at. Six foot one, 185 pounds, star development player. I am making all the subscriber players star development to start, just so you guys know. But he will be the wide receiver number three here in San Juan. Pretty good talent. Pretty good up and coming talent. He can catch the ball pretty well. Definitely good in the medium route. You know, 10 to, I would say 10 to 20 yards down the field. He's going to be open there in the middle of the field. God, that's, he's probably going to have. 200 yards when we play him because that's where teams seem to do all their damage. He can jump. He's pretty agile. So pretty good all around player is uh, Nick Stoyer. And he will be in the starting lineup behind Devontae Smith and Christian Watson. Who's throwing uh, my man Nick the ball here? It is Tua Tonga Vailoa. Okay, so we know Tua can get the ball downfield with Tyreek and Jalen Waddle in real life. Is Tua going to be able to help my man Nick here become a staple wide receiver in the league? We'll have to wait and find out. Shout out my man at Rams fan in the comments. You, sir, have an extremely high sense of humor. We have a new wide receiver on this team. If you watch the end of last episode, we cut Randall Cobb because he essentially lost that 
game for us. And now we bring in rookie out of the U, 5'11", 192 pounds. That is Mr. Mike Oxmall. Yeah, say that one slow. That is Mr. Mike ah! Oxmall. Yeah, thank you uh, so much for that. I'm going to be saying that on camera now, probably in each and every game. But pretty good wide receiver at that with 95 speed, 90 excel, and can catch the ball at a pretty high level. He will be our wide receiver number four, but he will definitely be in in some shotgun spread sets and things like that. So expect uh, Mr. Oxmall, maybe that's what I'll call him, to see the field from time to time. I believe I said we play San Juan in week 10. That is false. We play San Juan in week eight. We play these Albuquerque Armadillos in week 10 and we have the first linebacker to join the sfl here my man arturo esquivel shout out arturo esquivel 2871 in the comments could not make the college mexico my man i'm sorry i did not see it in the options so i just chose the closest thing i guess new mexico but we know in reality that my brother here played for the universidad de sonado sonada hopefully i'm saying that correct aka unison so we know that to be true. It's going to say New Mexico here, but starting linebacker already for the Albuquerque Armadillos in the AFC West. He's a pretty overall balanced linebacker. He's got decent speed at an 88, decent tackle at an 88. He's pretty strong. You know, he's he's pretty fast. He's pretty agile. So he can really do it all. And uh, Madden already has him in the top 9% wow. of left outside linebackers in the league. So that's pretty good for my man Arturo. And will he be uh, laying the big hits on Jordan Love in week 10? That is the question. I'm sure he will be because teams typically do that and typically get a lot of sacks on us. So Arturo, welcome to the to the SFL. And last but not least, just want to update my man uh, Yeezy Fuentes, David Fuentes in the comments. You did not get any targets last week, so I did move you above Jahan Dotson in the depth chart. True 82 overall player. Going to be battling with Jordan Addison in the also in the NFC South. So going to be a rival of Nick Stoyer. Looks like you guys will see each other twice per year. We got some uh, going to have some subscriber competition going on. I want to see that in the comments. You know, if your team's playing another team, you know, talk that smack in the comments. So Easy Fuentes should be getting some more targets. I believe Josh Allen is your quarterback. And if that's the case, he should yeah so with josh allen as your qb your wide receiver number two we'll check your progress but you should be getting a lot of targets and hopefully a lot of yards taking a look at week two around the league of course we play the oakland wizards and then the caps and the condor with uh, eli sokowitz so the battle of ohio we got the columbus caps versus the can condors curious to see who comes out on top in that one uh, as far as other subscriber players we got the uh, san juan tigers going to be taking on the Louisville Desperados. So my man, Nick Stoyer, hopefully he gets a lot of yards in that one. Uh, Lumberjacks taking on the Voyagers and the Armadillos taking on the Shamrocks as well as the Oklahoma City Antlers and the Virginia Beach Blues. And I think that is everybody. If I left anybody out in the comments, I am so, so sorry. Please feel free to correct me and I will get you added in the next episode. No worries at all. So this is week number two for us, your Toronto Thunderbirds, and we're taking on another 0-1 team, Oakland Wizards. We did take the L last week against the uh, Austin Lumberjacks, and let's just see what these Oakland Wizards are working with and see what we're up against today. Really hope we can come out on top, and I can tell you it's going to be an L already because Dak Prescott is playing, and Dak Prescott always plays. I would just so much rather see Bailey Zappi but I'm sure Dak Prescott's just going to throw for 400 plus yards. Running backs, they got Ramondre Stevenson and Deontay Foreman and Kenyon Drake as well. So nothing too crazy to look at on the ground. Roger Carter is going to be the fullback. DK going to be wide receiver number one to go along with DPJ, Josh Reynolds. So DK will be a threat. But aside from that, nobody that I'm really too concerned with. Chigakonkwo is the tight end. So tight ends, they really just got nobody. So it's probably going to be the DK and the Dak show, I would presume. Interesting enough, Tyron Smith is teamed back up with Dak Prescott. Left tackle, of course, on the Cowboys. Going to be pr protecting Dak's blind side here in Oakland as well. And Quentin Nelson. So we will have no sacks on Dak today. That much I can probably predict. Lloyd Cushenberry is the center. Robert Hunt is the right guard. 
So their offensive line is pretty good. Michael Wenyu also pretty good right tackle in his own right. Defensive line, we got Josh Pascal. Nothing too crazy there. Derek Barnett. So their offensive line is great. Defensive line, not, not so much. Tier Tart and Tim Settle. So nothing really to worry about there. Lucas Van Ness, the Packers rookie in real life, is going to be the left linebacker. Kaiser White is here, but he's hurt. So Mac Wilson, yeah, their defense, guys, is nothing really too scary at all. Kendall Fuller, shout out the uh, cornerback number one on our St. Louis Sentinels over on my other series. Check that out. We are in season number three of that franchise, and that is more of a you know realistic franchise. Go through all the scenarios type of thing. Do the draft, do the you know contract negotiations, all that fun stuff. This is more a series for my subscribers here. Um, just have fun with it, you know, get everybody involved. But uh, I'm not really too impressed with the Oakland Wizards defense. I mean, Tyron Matthew, okay, the honey badger, but he's old. And then Julian Love, pretty good safety, you know. Riley Patterson is the kicker, and they don't have a punter. So, uh, interesting. No punter on the Wizards roster. First home game here for the T-Birds. going to be in Toronto, Canada at Thunderbirds Field. And uh, if you guys are liking this series so far and you want to see the episodes continue to come, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I do drop Madden 24 content each and every week, most times twice a week. And please remember, if you would like to get in the SFL and have your player on a team and showcase weekly, please comment down below. Uh, somebody made a template in the comments. I think it was my man uh, at Nagram. I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, if it was somebody else, I'm sorry. I am having a brain fart right now, but thank you for making that template. And you guys can take take a look at that. Just need your name, well, what team you want to play for, position, of course, what college you went to, a little bit about the appearance. And I will add you into the SFL and you can join the league today. So without further ado, let's get our first dub of the season. Please get down to Thunderbirds Field in Toronto, and get ready for the game. Getting a look at the Oakland Wizards here, formerly uh, the Raiders in the AFC West. So Raiders going back to Oakland where they spent many, many years playing and really hoping that we can get our first W of the season. Dak Prescott, DK Metcalf on this team. It's not going to be an easy task. I feel like aside from them, there's not too many weapons, but those two are weapons in their own right. I do like the fact that we're kicking off first so that means that we are going to get the ball after halftime. And let's see if this defense can uh, just show up, show out, and make Dak a little bit uncomfortable out there. He didn't really have a, fur a very good game in his first game of the season. A buck 55 through the air, one touchdown to one pick. Now, that does not mean that that's the version of Dak that we're going to get whatsoever. Let me tell you that. It could easily be the Dak that goes for 400-something uh, yards. And I just feel like we're going to always have to kind of be watching DK Metcalf over there. That is going to be Chiga Conquo, though, the tight end. And if anybody else kills us besides DK Metcalf, I will, you know, tip my hat to these Oakland Wizards and say good job. But I'm just not going to let it be DK. I mean, I guess I can't even really say that because I could try my diddly darndest. Oh, it's going to be a quick little Ooh. RPO to DK. And I whiffed the tackle. I saw that one from a mile away, but I missed the tackle and DK does convert, picks up a first down. Got Ramondre Stevenson to his right, Dak does, and then also three wide receivers to the right. It's gonna be Ramondre. Marcus Peters meets him at the point of attack and limits uh, Ramondre to only a gain of four, which I can certainly live with. Let's uh, send a little bit of pressure Dak's way. See if maybe we can get Zach Cunningham or somebody in the backfield here, which, oh, we did. Read that one beautifully. Did not go for the running back at all. I usered Zach Cunningham on that play. And he got to Dak in basically a blink of an eye. So that is very, very good. Now it is uh, time to buckle down, play some good defense here, and just hopefully get the ball. Good defensive stand to start. It's going to be a launch up there to Decaf. DK, I, I meant... I said decaf. <laughs> no, he's not decaf. That's for sure. DK is very strong. And rather than going for the pick with Marcus Peters, I just decided to swap that ball down because I know what can happen when you go for a pick on a good receiver like Metcalf. His last name could be something else with the M. That would be Moss because we could 
easily get Moss there. And uh, Mark, uh, what's his name? Pat Pete. Going to get us to uh, pretty close to midfield. Jordan Love. What a year he had in Green Bay. Started out a little rocky, but man, oh man, that second half of the season, he took the Packers on quite the run. Could not beat the Texans in the playoffs. Uh, or not the Texans. The Browns played the Texans. Who did the Packers play? I should know this because I, I watched it, and now I'm just drawing a blank. But I'm trying to focus on a Madden here. Oh. Let's go to Waller. Nope. We are just going to get sacked by Josh Pascal for a big, big loss of 10. Right. It was the Niners, duh. Yeah, the Packers blew out the Cowboys in an upset and lost to the Niners. Don't know why I couldn't think of that. Anyways, second and 20, we're behind the sticks now, so gotta have a uh, good play here. Zay Jones, can we drop it in the bucket? What a pass by Love. That was not an easy pass. The corner was running with Zay Jones pretty much step for step. It was Kendall Fuller who was on our uh, St. Louis Sentinels team. But love, we pass led him to the left, and Love was able to uh, drop it in the bucket for a nice, nice completion. Now, we're coming out RPO here, so maybe could be Zay, uh, Zay Jones all the way. Someone throw me a good block. Come on, Zay Juke. Oh, nice. Not really a juke, but more of a stiff arm. Zay Jones with back-to-back -back great plays. Kind of like draw play to Kyron here. We're in field goal range. We got Justin Tucker, so worst case scenario, we're going to hopefully come away with points. And Kyron Williams not able to do anything on that one as he has driven back for a actually a loss of one. So that is not uh, not what you want to be doing. That's for sure if you're our running back number one. Um, in this situation, though, kind of like Olave on the drag. I want to have him back there in case nothing uh, materializes downfield, which it's not going to. And somehow we just barely by the skin of our nards, got that pass away. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Now, if I have Kyron Williams be an extra blocker, maybe, just maybe, Olave can get downfield, which I think... Oh, Jordan Love threw such an inaccurate ball there, man. Oh, with a little bit more accuracy. We had Olave open. Okay, it's fine. Uh, striking first, drawing first blood with, uh, with Jay Tuck here. Not the worst thing in the world. I will certainly take it. And with this kick arc slowed down, should be pretty easy to boot all these field goals through. Going to watch uh, Ramondre Stevenson here to Dax the left. We got Leonard Floyd kind of spying, watching him. And it's going to be a check down to Stevenson anyways. Stevenson making men miss, picking up another first down. I'm feeling pressure again here too. Might be a good call. It's going to be a play fake actually. <laughs> And wide open was DPJ, but it was an inaccurate ball from Dak. I think he was kind of feeling the pressure there a little bit. And luckily for us, we were able to hold him. Now, here we go. Another big third down. Can we get them off of the field again? We were able to on the previous drive. No way this is a handoff. I was going to say, come on, crash on Dak. Oh, man. Dak was able to get it. I was mashing, and he just literally picked somebody up. Oh, freaking, uh, what, what's that called? Doggy? I can't even think of it now. He put him on his shoulders, is what I'm trying to say. And that was a very, very weird animation, but it was also effective as Dak was able to pick up the first down. So let's see what he does on this drive. That time, it's not a play fake, but the minimal gain for Stevenson and Chiga Conquo going to go down to the turn. Where's DK? Yeah, DK is pressing his man, so I kind of feel like I need to use their control. Antoine Winfield, and it's a pick from Marcus Peters. Okay, so defense playing much better in this one than they did in the opening game against Austin. Marcus Peters, of course, been doing this for a long time. I accidentally skipped the uh, instant replay there, so my apologies. But that was, he just jumped right in front of the route, and that was a good, good play indeed. First and 10, we're coming out of the pistol. Going to roll out to the left and see who can possibly get open. It's Waller, but only for a minimal gain of one. Maybe TE attack would be a good play here. Need Trent Williams to hold his block. I might uh, try to roll out, which is exactly what I'm going to do. And Darren Waller had to dive for it, had to jump for it. Jordan Love, not uh, the most accurate, not the most crisp on his passes, 
to start this one out, I will say. But I feel like we really got to get Kyron Williams going on the ground. So let's bring in uh, Kyle Juszczyk. Need a good lead block for Williams, and that's exactly what we needed. And it was a nice lead block from Olave, too. May have, uh, could have cut it inside with Kyron, but I am not going to sit here and argue with it as it was a very, very good run. And I'll tell you what, let's uh, let's go back to Kyron. Yeah, I think that's the right move. Kyron with the space up the middle on the RPO, picking up another first down, keeping the chains moving. Tell you what, the big surprise of this game is the defense of the T-Birds. They were not there too much in the last game. They actually were. They actually were there in the last game against the Lumberjacks. It's just that, you know, at the very end, we started playing soft and let them come back. But in this situation, I think I'm going to go ahead and motion over Logan Thomas. It's going to shift that line, and we may have something running behind Big Trent Williams here. Let's see if that's the move. It is. Kyron gets in. Ryan Kelly gets injured for his efforts. But that's okay. Your sacrifice was a good one, my brother, as the T-Birds are going to take a 10-point lead and if our defense keeps playing the way they have, we might be on to something here in this game, guys. What is Dak Prescott and the boys going to respond with here? I don't know. Hopefully nothing. Hopefully another pick. That would actually be uh, pretty awesome if that was the case. He's coming out single back, but I am going to go uh, nickel blitz here just because I wouldn't be surprised if it's a play fake. It's not, of course. It's just a run up the gut with Ramondre. And he is able to pick up about 10 on the play. Single back again. This time, you know, I don't like the outside here. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson has been pretty good on the outside runs. But again, it's just a run up the gut and we can't stop him. What was that? Yaya Diaby finally does. But uh, sweet sister Francis, that was a good run. Dak's like, screw it. If I can't get it done in the passing game, let me just give it to Ramondre. And he's been the answer on this drive for sure. Gain of five is about uh, the the lowest gain he's gotten on this one here. And I, it, <laughs> I, wouldn't that be something? <laughs> wouldn't that be something? We shut down Dak. It's like, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, it's going to be Ramondre Stevenson. He's going to be the reason why we tear you up. And Bobby Wagner, I used her controlled on him. Followed Ramondre beautifully for no gain on that one. I think uh, psh, pressure seems like a good idea here. So we're just going to do it. Hope Bruh. for the best. Oh, it's DK. Okay. Okay, that was, uh, yeah, it was only a matter of time, guys. It was only a matter of time before DK got involved. I actually had uh, Miles Garrett out there drop back in coverage, which uh, is not something that you typically see. And I think I thought he was going to be in actually good position, but turns out he was not. That should be, that's going to be a penalty on me probably, I would imagine. Not going to matter because Chica Conquo couldn't be, couldn't be a false start because they would have blown the play dead. I'm assuming it's encroachment or something like that. Yeah, it's offsides. All right, well, um, that drive was very easy. I don't like that. I like the first two drives Penalty better. The good thing, though, is since we do have a lead, as long as we keep scoring, touchdowns, that is, preferably, we'll always have a lead. So right now, our goal is just to score. I mean, that's your goal on every drive, right? But our goal, number one A, Score a touchdown on every single time we have the ball. I'm going to ride the Kyron wave for as long as they allow me to. Joe Tooney, I know you can set better blocks than that, man. I am less than impressed with what I have seen from you today, my friend. I got to be perfectly honest. I'm, I'm not I'm not digging it. I know you're a great, great offensive lineman, so don't give me that. Okay. Second and eight now, coming out shotgun with some drags and just seeing who can possibly get open. That's Zay Jones. It's been the Zay Jones show. It has been the Zay Jones show for sure in this one. I think that uh, draw play is a good call here. We only need two yards. So just need, there's Joe. There's, that's the Joe Tooney that we all know and love. Come on now. He said a great block on that one. I followed him like my friggin' life depended on it, man. Coach is a big fan of these mesh spots and I'm trying to show you guys you know, I, I typically don't call my own plays, so it is pretty much the coach on this one. Let's see who can uh, get open, wide open there. That's Olave. I believe that's his second catch of the game. A big one at that as now Jay Love goes. Oh, his first catch. Okay. Thought he had one more, but apparently I was uh, 
mistaken. I think I form. I form to Kyron's probably a good call here. I need to remember. I got to work uh, Kareem Hunt. I want him in some sets. Right now, he's not in any hardly. So he's not really seeing the field too much. I definitely want Hunt to see the field. So I got to make sure we work him into some sets here. Big, big third down. There's Kareem. Okay, there's, there's Mr. Hunt. And I actually am going to streak Olave here. Call me crazy. If he gets in front of this safety, which he's not gonna, but there's Kareem Hunt. I was just talking about him. Hey, flag. Is that a late hit? No way it's a holding. Yes, sir. Thank you, Joey Porter. I'm going to continue giving it to Kyron because, again, want to take some more time off of this clock. Plus, I am known to throw picks from time to time. So let's see if uh, Kyron can make it happen. Nice block from check And Williams gets in. Oh, it's so nice having a great fullback, man. So nice having a great fullback. Watch the, uh, the lead block. Okay, so there's a nice impact block, first of all. And then I, I'm almost going towards Mac Wilson. But I follow you, check. I will follow you into the promised land, brother. I will walk hand in hand with you, step for step. And that is going to be Kyron Williams' second touchdown of the day. And we're going to go up 17-7. to seven. Ooh, This could be an outside run all day, every day to Ramondre. I don't like that. No, it's just going to be a play action. Where's Dak going to go? There's Miles Garrett. Thank you. Pick it up right where he left off last game. Third sack on the season. And that is going to put the Dallas. Look, I almost I said. I'm going to say Dallas Cowboys because Dak. That puts the Oakland Wizards in a very, very tricky position. Yeah, if they want to run it, so be it. I'm fine with that. And it looks like they might. Yep, they're just going to go ahead and be content to punt it back to us. And that gives us all the time in the world to really open this up. And we get the ball after halftime, too. So this one is looking very, very good for the T-Birds. However, if you remember, we were up, and that's just a really bad... I don't think they have a punter. That's the thing. I do not think they have a punter. Because their punts... I mean, they, they did not have a punter on the roster. So I have no idea who's punting the ball. Actually, I got to check that. And they got their kicker, Jake Verity, also punting. And, I mean, I'm sure... He can kick balls, obviously, but there's a reason why you got a kicker and you got a punter. And I, so far, all these punts from the Wizards have been pretty much atrocious. And now we got the ball already in plus territory as well. So we just have to do our thing, slow, methodical drive. And look, we're already in Jay Tuck field goal range off of the screen pass. So, like, I am in no rush to score this ball. And you can see the coach is really, really high on these screens let's flip it though to the right just because we have been running most of our screens to the left and i don't want you know oakland to start uh cluing in on these bad boys and figuring us out so let's just make sure we keep them guessing and that is just pretty much uh oh and jordan loves injured wow okay okay so enter case keenum the 11 year pro from houston i mean that that is about uh, <laughs> the last thing that could have happened here. And since we got Case, I don't really know really what to expect from him. I'm just going to play it safe. I know we can drill a kick, a kick with uh, Justin Tucker. I'm not going to do anything dumb. I'm just going to try to play smart. Surprised they called a timeout. I guess it makes sense. But oh my gosh. Jordan Love, I sure, sure hope that he can come back. I don't really want Case Keenum under center ever, but especially for the rest of this game. Okay, Jordan Love will come back. Thank my lucky stars. That was, uh, yeah, that, that, I thought screen pass was going to be the safe call on that one. You can, as you see, screens do not always work. That Maybe that was on me for not getting the pass off quick enough. Let's see if Oakland even tries to move the ball downfield. And that will take us to the end of the first half. They did 
they did a little screen pass. We stopped them. They went for it on third down. They weren't able to get it. So Jordan Love is back. I see him out there jumping around. He's excited. His team is up by 13, and we get the ball back. But very, very imperative, I think, that we score on this opening drive. We'll take a look around the league here and just kind of see what's going on. First up on the docket, we have the Rio de Janeiro Redwoods and the Paris Black Knights. So the Redwoods are up 7-0. They got Justin Fields. They got CMC. They look to be, uh, I think they also got Tyreek Hill, if I'm not mistaken. Portland Steamers and the Anchorage Snowhawks up next. Portland is dominating that one with Jalen Hurts. And then St. Louis Bulls and the Oilers. A couple of 0-1 teams, uh, the Tyrod Taylor and Cooper Rush, I believe, matchup. So that is pretty scary indeed. Now, Kyron Williams was a big focus of our game plan, and I think that we continue that, although... It didn't even let me pick my game plan, so, okay. Oh, come out, Pistol here. First and 10 from the 31. I think uh, Waller needs to block for me. Might have MVS on this corner route, depending. Um, if we can get it over the head of the defender, I like it. MVS coming up, and he fumbled it. Oh, Marquez, man. He was down, right? Had to be down. Oh, yeah, he's he's down. That one's coming back. Not even worried about it. Give me the booth review. Thank you. But Marquez, don't be doing that, brother. Don't be doing that. You see what happened to Randall Cobb. We got Mike Coxmall back in, in the team now. Toasty. You can get cut just like Randall. All right, good, good deal. Now, um, we're coming out play fake again, but I kind of... I mean, we'll stick with it. Maybe Waller, possibly Olave. I think it is Waller, actually. Nice pass from Love. And why does the camera... Hold on. Every time I complete a freaking pass, the camera angle changes. I don't like that. I got to check this real quick. Every time a player makes a pass or something like that, uh, the camera's zooming in. I'm not a huge fan of it. Never seen it happen before. Also, I see MVS wide open out there, but... I'm just going to stick with my gut and what I called Kyron up the middle. That's why we do it. Nice pass, but Joe Tooney now gets injured. So injuries starting to uh, play a pretty big role in this game, I would say. But we're knocking. We're basically into the red zone, in the green zone, as they call it. And let's just pick this up. Uh, Zay Jones is open. Boom! We are going to open this thing up with a 20 point lead against the Wizards as I was saying man they got Dak and DK but that is really maybe I should just shut my mouth because Madden is always listening and we're oh yeah we're actually going to go for two okay I can rock with it make it a 21 point three touchdown game let's go Y stick to Olave coach did call it so I feel good about it and Olave catches it very very good from Chris and now we go up by three touchdowns to an Oakland team that really hasn't been able to move the ball at all. Oh, nickel blitz here. I think it's the right call. Also got DK Metcalf over here on the left. So got to make sure we have eyes on him at all times. And wide open in the middle of the field is going to be the tight end there, Kenny Yabua. And I think that the zoom camera thing is fixed. Now, that was very strange. Very strange. It was kind of messing me up. And in a game that we're playing so good. I don't want anything to mess me up. Now, we also have the luxury of seeing one of the routes on the field, which is nice. So maybe we can possibly bait somebody here. And it's going to be a check down to Stevenson for only a gain of four. See what Dak does coming out of the I form here. Going to use her control on Bobby Wagner. It's going to be another sack. It's Zach Cunningham. Zach Cunningham was in there to get the tackle, the sack, along with Yaya Diaby. And that is our third sack of the game to go along with, what do we have, one pick? I don't know. I said pre-game that we weren't going to get any sacks on deck. That hasn't happened. Uh, it's been the opposite, which is usually not how it goes in Madden. And now we have the luxury again of seeing the routes. So we're going to be, it's not going to matter there. Okay, nice. Nice play there from Patrick Peterson. And that is going to make fourth and 14. And the Wizards just cannot do anything. They are going to punt the ball back to us. We are playing great. They don't have a punter. They have a kicker, and he's not been putting the ball very good to start. Come on, give me a block. Let Patrick Peterson eat. I mean, I guess he nibbled a little bit on that one. 
Okay. Or Kyron here gonna come out I form and the blocking is great. Kyron doing his thing. Going over 100 now easily. He's at a buck 10 with two touchdowns and I absolutely love it. Now this is a run, but it's also a RPO to Zay Jones and I may look to hit him. I am 100%. Give me a block, Chris. There we go. Okay, Zay Jones. Wide receiver number one. Don't tell Chris Olave that. I think he's only got one catch in this one, maybe two, if I'm not mistaken. But Zay Jones has got seven of them puppies for over 100 yards. And that one, I mean, the coverage just dictate. And look, if I really wanted to, I could go PA cross, probably hit Zay Jones and just open this thing wide open. But again, trying to uh, battle with old Father Time here. And Father Time is a seasoned pro. He knows exactly what he's doing. Kyron that just keeps finding the hole. I think that we're starting to wear down this Oakland defense. I mean, right now it's basically just inside zone and lead blocks out of the I form. And Kyron almost getting his third touchdown of the afternoon. Let's go ahead and give it to him right now. I think he's I think he's earned it. I think he deserves it. Let's go inside zone. They only got three men in a four-point stance here, so this should be easy money for Williams wasn't easy and actually it's no money for Williams because he actually got denied this time we should be able to get it I would think and hat trick for Williams Marquise Goodwin goes down so that should definitely see uh more of Mike you know who I'm talking about you know who I'm talking about Mr. Oxmall that should see more of Mr. Oxmall and if we get a big enough lead maybe I'll just bring in Case Keenum Try to get Mike Oxmall some touches here. Marquise Goodwin not going to be in the game either, so there you go. 110 pass yards. I mean, we are sub 200, but it's because Kyron Williams, you know, he, he's made it so we don't have to throw 300-plus yards. And when you don't have to throw 300-plus yards and you can rely on your running game, that really wears a defense down. And that is something that I think, you know, lots of teams strive for and many fall short in and... Benefits to seeing these routes really, really paying off for us. The receiver's going to motion and be like a little Z spot type of play here. So it's going to be Leonard Floyd again. We're just going to drop him down, sit him down in coverage. Where's Dak going to go? He's going to find Ramondre on the outside for actually a pretty good game. Those being able to see the route momentum factors can be a blessing and a curse because I feel like, at least for me, you tend to see that route, you tend to focus on it, and you kind of lose sight of everything else. Now, here's where it's good because there's no route on the field, so we know it's going to be a run play to Stevenson, and we're able to shut it down for only a gain of three. Tight end's going to be cut into the middle of the field, so Bobby Wagner's going to run with him. Oh, Garrett almost got us. That would have been four sacks in two games for the reigning defensive player of the year. Weren't able to get to Zach. To Zach. No, not Zach. To Dak. And is this going to be a run play, too? Surely it won't, but I see no routes on the field. So I'm thinking it may just be, and it is. Wow. You're going to run it on third and seven. Down by a trillion. And I mean, you got to gotta go for it now, right? Have to go for it now. And now we see the route. It is going to be a, a DK or a DPJ inside route here. So we're going to have LaMarcus Joyner and it's just going to be Ramondre Stevenson making me pay for only looking at one route. Now, unlike the uh, Lumberjacks game, I don't think that there's, I mean, there's really no way. Yeah, like even if they score, I mean, I will literally quit Madden. Okay, you got that on record. I, God, I hope, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have said that. But I mean, they're gonna be down by 21. Five minutes to go here. Got Kareem Hunt subbed in. Kyron Williams has earned his rest. Last thing I want is for him to uh, get injured or something like that. Plus. Want to see my man Kareem get some reps. I'm a big Kareem fan. Of course, uh, you guys probably know this by now, but I'm a huge Packers fan. But I live here in Ohio, and Kareem Hunt is on the Browns, and he has, you know, kind of a fan favorite. It was a tough thing that happened to Kareem. Not going to go into that when he was with Kansas City, right or wrong. I'm sure that Kareem, uh, you know, has learned from his past mistakes. But the fact that Cleveland gave him, you know, another shot and essentially a resurgence of his career, he's played a big, big factor in the Browns' uh, recent success. How about a little more Kareem Hunt here before the two-minute warning? Show me something good, Kareem. I mean, hey, powering through, Kareem averaging six yards per carry. 
So uh, really impressed with this T-Birds rushing attack that we've seen on display today. Starting to get a little dark here in Thunderbird Stadium, and that is fine with me because I think it is just about night-night time for these Oakland Wizards, and that will definitely wrap the game up in Kareem Hunt. Man, he gets injured. <laughs> on what's probably going to be the second to last play of the game. But it's okay, Kareem. You came in and did your thing. Now let's put these Wizards to bed. 42-14 actually ends up being your score. Kyron Williams did score uh, in the final stages of the game. I was just trying to run the clock out. So he actually ended with four touchdowns. Now, only bad news is Kareem Hunt did not come back. So he might be hurt. But Jordan Love played a flawless game. I mean, doing everything that you would expect a starting QB to do, and Dak had a similar stat line to what we saw in his week one performance. But here is the MVP of the game, Kyron Williams. Workhorse, absolute workhorse in this one. 28 attempts, 146 yards, averaging over five yards per carry. And how about those four touchdowns? Kareem Hunt, he may have gotten hurt, but he did average over six yards per carry in the limited time that he saw. Zay Jones was on fire. Seven catches for 108 yards, found the end zone. I mean, he was our main receiver and also Kyron Williams too. I mean, Williams was a factor in both the running and the passing game. And DK Metcalf only with two catches. I cannot believe that. But gotta check on this defense. Zach Cunningham, a sack and a half. Miles Garrett has three now on the year. Yaya Diaby gets a half a sack. And then of course, Marcus Peters, got that pick so what a way to bounce back from that uh ugly heartbreaking loss against austin last week we'll go to one and one on the season but the most important thing now let's check and see how some of our subscribers did here in week two eli sakowitz and his condors did drop to the columbus caps but let's just see at least if my man socks had any sort of impact in this game at all where is he at so he had four tackles and a pass deflection, a forced fumble. Okay, Socks, I see you. And a fumble recovery. So he got a forced fumble, recovered his own fumble, and had a pass deflection. So, I mean, my man Socks did everything he could. Unfortunately, his Condors lost, but good play. Good uh, game from the rookie out of Delaware. Nick Stoyer and his San Juan Tigers also dropped to the Louisville Desperados. But let's see what sort of impact my man played in this game. Hopefully, he was able to get something going. He had one catch for 11 yards. So, I mean, you know, not really too much. But uh, looks like Christian Watson was the main target in that one. But still, at least we see him getting involved on the field. And I'm sure you'll have a better game in San Juan's next game. There we go. Subscriber player getting a win here. Arturo Esquivel and his Albuquerque Armadillos got the victory. Let's see what uh, my man Esquivel did on the defensive side of the ball playing that linebacker position he had two tackles and two tackles but still that's all right looks like it was a defensive minded game so at least he got on the field and made some sort of impact easy fuentes and the blues get the big win over the okc antlers and that was the team that we just uh released michael yakin from so good thing he's no longer on that team and there we go that's a little bit better Nothing too crazy, but four receptions, 31 yards, averaging 7.8 yards per carry. So definitely good to see the two-year pro out of Oregon on the field making some impact. And last but certainly not least, our division rival Austin Lumberjacks dropped to the San Antonio Voyagers. Here is the big question. So Michael Yakin, he played great. 342 yards, three touchdowns to one interception. So he did everything that he could possibly do in that game. 63% completion, and Lamar Jackson, I mean, he also did pretty good as well. Always tough when you play a Lamar Jackson-led team, and in terms of receivers here, James Briner, four catches for 30 yards, so definitely more of an impact than he had in our game, and good to see these subscribers on the field making some plays for their team and showing up in the box scores. So that is going to do it for me tonight, guys, taking on the Dublin Shamrocks in the next episode. Our whole division's one and one so basically we're all even here, and I got a couple more subscriber players to add that have already commented, um, and if you want to have your player in the SFL, comment down below, and I will add you in. So that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, 
I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.